Some of the materials you can use for scratch board include sharpened sticks, tacks, pins, utensils for other working like clay working utensils, palette knives, old nib pens if the nibs uh, are not functional or not working you can try and use those, sandpaper you can buy a proper scratching tool they sell with the graffiti board or you can just use an exacto knife if you're making your own graffiti board you can buy some of the clay coated board uh, or clay coated paper or poster board India ink inexpensive or you can coat it also with gouache or other types of materials or my preference for scratch board is to use the pre-coated scratch board that you can buy and it comes in both the hardboard clay model as well as something that resembles illustration board and a thinner type that looks like poster board uh, sort of a shiny ink covering over a coated surface okay, so you can use a, a thumbtack or any type of sharp media this is the homemade scratch board this is a clay coated page or a clay coated board and we've rubbed some India ink on it and we've rubbed some um, water-based paint onto here they haven't fully dried yet so I'm not sure how successful we're going to be but it's a it's a subtractive process you're basically going to scratch to reveal the board or the paper underneath and you want to experiment with doing line different line qualities or line weights you also want to experiment with hatching as a way to express tone. Uh, doesn't have to be, like I said, a thumbtack. We have an old ink pen where the nibs break or they don't quite work. You can try using uh, this type of a surface to get a different effect from this. You can buy a specialty scratch knife. It usually comes with some interchangeable bits. The spade bit is the one that they start you out with. And uh, it's almost like a, a slight razor point that fits inside a dip ink pen holder and you can scratch away the surface of the board as well uh, because they are replaceable or different uh, nib widths that you can put inside here you can do different effects with it just as often though I resort to using an exacto knife plain number 10 or 11 exacto knife and I'll take some masking tape and uh, I'll cover as much of the blade as I want to handle to maintain control. So obviously further back you're going to have a little bit of bounce or wiggle to the blade. The closer to the tip you get you're going to have more control. So I'm going to do some stuff that's fairly controlled. You do want to be careful whenever you're handling any kind of knife to avoid an accident. Okay. Then you can scratch away at the surface. I actually like this the best out of all the different tools. I'm going to move on to some of the pre-prepared graffiti board or scratch board, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, this stuff happens to be manufactured by Canton. This is a illustration weight board with the ink kind of rubbed onto the surface. There's the clay coating underneath that prevents it from getting absorbed too deep into the straight. And you can scratch away. use different grades of sandpaper uh, to create different effects. I've had, there are, as we mentioned before, clay tools or tools that aren't meant, meant for scratch board. There's one that has uh, some grooves in here so you can get some neat effects by scratching. The blade, it not being as sharp as an exacto blade or the spade bit for a, a scratch tool, uh, you can kind of get almost a burnish quality. I'm just trying to, trying to hack away at this here. Less expensive uh, little cheaper quality I guess too in price looks almost like poster board typically matte on one side it's coated on the other it's shiny and it's got the shiny coating on this surface um, I don't like it as much as that other board but uh, there are people who prefer to work with this this is nicer if you have to mount it if you have to mount the final product or if you have to incorporate this into something else because it is it's thinner. It's sort of a uh, index weight or a poster weight board. Uh, a lot of times when you're working with a scratch tool, things are negative. So the areas that you want to be white, you're going to sort of leave behind. So I'm doing some eyes here.
And the exacto, by changing the angle, I find I can get a greater variety of sort of scratch shapes. Can you then do some sort of color wash? Absolutely. <laughs> So that's a start. You can go back and can start to add tone and definition to it. You can try some of the other tools. Um, I actually like using this. You can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's a, a broken pen nib. So this is really of no use anymore to anybody uh, dipping it inside an inkwell. But you can get these equally sort of spaced lines to start bring out some, some tonal variation in what it is you're working on. See when it lays down a scratch, it lays down sort of a two-pronged uh, scratch because of that split, split nib head. It. Yeah, you're kind of working reverse. Um, you, you're adding the highlight instead of the shadow when you work with scratch board. It's kind of like when you draw on a chalkboard. 